Tong Zhao is a fellow in the nuclear policy program at the Carnegie Endowment for International Peace. He joins us now from Beijing, where he studies nuclear arms control and missile issues. Thank you for joining us. Hi, how are you? Let's begin with the ROK's president's visit to the United States this week. Uh, a lot of disagreement in how to handle the DPRK, but do you think he could bring Donald Trump around to see his viewpoint? Well, uh, South Korea and the United States, they do agree on a number of issues. They do want to denuclearize North Korea, but they disagree on one important matter, which is what's the precondition for negotiating with North Korea. They both understand that ultimately the international community has to talk with North Korea to settle the dispute. The U.S. position is for talking with North Korea, North Korea has to first show signs of willing to control its nuclear program. But South Korea, China, and Russia, they want to have a negotiation with North Korea as soon as possible without much preconditions. The point right now is North Korea is willing to have a moratorium on its nuclear and missile tests. But the issue for the United States is it has not really uh, had a good idea about what small compromise that Washington is willing to offer in return for the small North Korean compromise. And really, you know, Donald Trump hasn't been in office very long. He seems pretty new to all of this. Uh, can he get there? Um, that's my first question. And to that point, you know, China really hasn't changed its stance on the DPRK. Um, do you think the new ROK president, Moon Jae-in, has uh, has a more diplomatic outlook. Do you think we could see China and the ROK work closer together and make a difference themselves? Yes, I still uh, have hope that Mr. Trump will learn the real difficulties in dealing with North Korea. So far, he seems to have the illusion that more economic sanctions will do the work. The fact is, in order for economic sanctions to force North Korea to give up nuclear weapons, the international community has to impose so tough sanctions that can directly threaten the survival of the regime. That's when the North Korean government will make the conclusion that by maintaining their nuclear weapons, they are actually less safe and less secure. However, if we are to impose so tough sanctions that directly threaten the survival of the regime, that directly contradicts the American policy of not pursuing regime change, but only policy change. So there is an internal dilemma in the current American policy. I think over time, there is still hope that Mr. Trump will come to the sense that we have to address the threat perception of North Korea that is motivating North Korea's nuclear program, and it's the United States that causes North Korea's threat perception. Regarding South Korea and China, I think the two countries are currently more or less on the same page. Both countries believe that we have to contain the current tensions to avoid the tensions from further escalating. Therefore, both countries want to talk as soon as possible to North Korea, and as the first step, hopefully to have a deal with North Korea to freeze its uh, increasing nuclear and missile capabilities. And President Moon says for now he will keep that on the Korean Peninsula. But if he does or happens to change his mind, could that make a difference in getting uh, the DPRK to the table as well as maybe those military exercises? I think... Uh, President Moon uh, made a decision to suspend the complete deployment of the SAT system uh, as a basic strategy of buying time. Because this suspension strategy doesn't really sat uh, satisfy the uh, requirements of either China or the United States. China wants to see the complete uh, cancel cancellation of the deployment while the United States wants the deployment in place as soon as possible. The hope, I think, is given the strategic uh, environmental assessment of the SAT system might take one to two years to complete, then all the international uh, uh, players, 
in the region can use this very precious time of one to two years to work very hard on North Korea. If we can effectively contain the tensions over North Korea's nuclear program, if we can effectively reduce the threat from North Korea's nuclear program, then South Korean government will have bigger, bigger room uh, because by that time, there will be less urgency in deploying the threat. I think that's the only way forward. All right, Tong Chao in Beijing, thank you for joining us.